Welcome back to the second part of this um, landmine slash bomb detector tutorial. Uh, I assume you've already seen and followed the first part, uh, but just for fun, this is what we did in the first video. So we set up a spot where there are where a landmine is. So if you go over here and just stay here, you will die. And we created the detector, so when you right click, the detector shows, and if you go with the detector, it pops up, because you find it. So, you can get away safely. Now, what we will do now is make sure the player can pick up the landmines. So we will create a HUD, where we can see a very, very easy HUD, simple HUD, where you can see how many mines you picked up and if you pick up three mines you can combine them and create a bomb that you can use to explode the wall for example so if you pick up six mines you can explode two walls you know and etc so let's just continue where we left off start by going into your detector folder right click and take user interface widget blueprints and we will call this landmine no i want it like that landmine hud open it and then drag in a text box block and we will call this landmine counter text for example and under content just write a number we're not going to use that number anyway and then under fonts we're going to make it bigger like this maybe change the color a bit like so what happened oh i just got away from it it got away from me so is that instead of you know scaling like this just take size to content put it up here and anchor it to the top left corner that way it will always be anchored to the top left corner no matter the screens the screen size so compile and save and that's enough for now so go back into the first person character searching okay I can see I forgot to make a comment box so I'm just gonna do that see um, press detector button to activate searching for example yeah uh, oh yeah here you know I'm sorry I did something what you see is like this so these are prefabricated blueprints, we don't need any of those. So just drag this out and we're going to use this begin play. So drag out here and search for a widget. Create widget. And class landmine hud. Then drag out again and search for a viewport add to viewport connect target to return value yeah and owning player is get player controller compile save and let's see if it works here we go of course right now we can't do anything let's see so next we will go back to the landmine HUD and select the text and here on the content we will click bind and we'll create binding now this function now is called get underscore landmine counter text underscore text underscore zero <laughs> and that's that's a mouthful so we're gonna right click and rename it to simply land mine k 
counter HUD. It's a little better. So now we will make sure the player is actually counting how many mines he or she has picked up. So we can go back to the first person character and create a new variable. And it's going to be called total landmines. Landmines. And it's going to be an integer. Compile. And it's going to be a zero. So now go back to the landmine HUD. And I'm going to be sure I'm not screwing, screwing up anything. So from this drag out and take cast to first person character then the object is first person cast no that's not right that is get player character now as the first person character we will get the total amount of landmines and we're gonna print that straight to the to the return value <laughs> like so compile and save Now we will go back out here and we will open our BP landmine. Oops, sorry about that. And we're going to do so when the player presses E, he will pick up a mine. So go out into the event graph. And under here, we're going to right click and write E. E and we will get the B is landmine. Drag out this branch pressed. So if we press E and it is a landmine, then we will cast this to our first person character object is get uh, get uh, player character and then we will as the first person character we will get the total amount of landmines and then since we're picking up a landmine we will add one so drag out from that and just click plus integer plus integer one and we drag out here and we will set wait total no not there here total set total landmines so then we connect this to total landmines so what's happening here if it's not clear is that we pick up one landmine, so we add one, and then we set the total landmines again. So every time we pick up one, we set the you know the current state of the amount of landmines we have. That's how you say it. Uh, difficult, right? But it works. So that's what we do. And when we pick up a landmine, we're gonna play a sound. Play sound at location, and if you use my pickup sounds that I showed you in the last video, then you can just search for pick up, and we will take the pickup sound number three. And you know, when the mine is picked up, we will destroy it. Destroy actor. Reading C symbols. Why are you doing that? So select all of them and press C and we will comment a bit. If press E plus is landmine, 
then you know add one mine to total landmines yeah here we have uh, yeah <laughs> it doesn't matter it's okay compile and save Oh, we got an error, 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 because I forgot the targets, and the target, of course, is the first person player character. So, compile and save. Here we go. Now, let's see. We go out, we play. We now see after we bound it that it says zero instead of 99. So, if we go here and we see this mine and we press E, we pick it up, and we got one. So that's cool. So we can drag out a few more. You know, you can just control C, control V to duplicate them. And just make sure it works. All good. Now Let's go back into the landmine HUD. So we will comment this. Display amount of mines gathered. But now we will make sure that when we have more than three, we will be able to activate the big bomb. So. I'll just change this a little bit. So before we show the total landmines, we're going to drag this out. Actually, we're going to take this from that. And we will again cast to first person character. Gets player character, and then as the first person player, we're gonna get the total landmines. And if these are more than or equal to three, so we do like this more than or equal to three. If that's the case, that means we have to use a branch. Connect this. So if we got more than three or three, then we are going to create a new variable. And I'm going to make sure I'm creating it the right place. So we create not local, but regular. So B B big bomb ready and we're gonna create another one right away which is called B big bomb used just compile so we're gonna set this so if we have more than three mines we're gonna make sure the big bomb is ready. And if we have less than it, then, you know, it's not ready. So don't check it. Now we have to go out into the designer again and we will create some text. And we can call this text just big bomb text. And the content will be big bomb activated. And size to content. I'm gonna make the font a little bit bigger. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a lot, I meant 20, 28. And give it a color red 
and now take a button and drag in the button and drag in some text and put it on the button and the text will be X to explode yeah, and give the button some color as well so select the button style normal tint we can make that red as well red as hell so now we can go back to the graph so what will happen when the big bomb is ready is that we will make this visible so first first select first the text and make it invisible visibility hidden and do the same for the button so it starts hidden compile now go back to the graph and oh I didn't name the button this is the big bomb button ain't that right yes that's right compile save I always compile and save now we drag in the big bomb button and then we drag in the where is the text oh I forgot please select the text and make it a variable and compile and go back to the graph and now we can drag in the big bomb text as well now both of these will have their visibility set so drag out one and and write set visibility to visible connect both of them like so and control control V on that and make this hidden connect both to it and connect this so what's happening here if you don't understand is that when the big bomb is checked and it's ready we will make the big bomb button and the text visible and if it's not ready it will be hidden and this will happen when we have more than three mines so select all of this C three mines equals activates big bomb and then remember to connect this to this one up here so it will be returned and I'm gonna create a few reroute nodes because this is ugly that's a little bit better compile save so let's just see pick up pick up pick up and here we have it big bomb activated but of course if I press X nothing happens but at least we have come this far so let's um, create a new input go to edit project settings input action mappings a new action mapping and we will create this big bomb button no take key because we've already called something the button and the big bomb key will be a keyboard key and it will be the X key like so 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 let's see what's next okay we can go into the HUD and we can create a new function which be, will be the opposite of this so a new function and we will call this landmine counter 
HUD underscore after boom. Because the other one is before boom. But they're pretty, pretty uh, similar. So we can just, you know, copy all of this, control C, and go into the new one, control V. And we will see here that we can just put this new one in here and make sure that we swap out the right things. Now, this is important because it's easy to do this, you know, just skip a step. So, one thing's first things first. Now, it's not about if we have more than three mines, it's if we have less than three mines, which we will have, you know, if we have used them. This is, after all, after the boom. So, swap out this and take less than or equal to 3. That's the condition. And now it's not the big bomb is ready. No, it's the big bomb is used as we created. I should have created that now. I know, I'm sorry. So drag this in and set it. So if the big bomb is used, check. We will hide the visibility on this text and the button on the screen. Control, Control C, Control V for this and uncheck that. And if it is not used, we'll make sure they're still visible. And I'm gonna be certain that I'm not doing anything wrong here now. Well, I actually am because this is gonna be if it's, yeah, well, the result is the same, but I'm gonna do exactly how I how I plan how I've planned it. So we're just gonna make this like this, yeah. So if it's true that we are having less less than three, then we can say the bomb is used and this is visible. And if we have more than three, you know, the bomb is used. Am I making sense? This is making sense, but I'm not making sense. So just do what I have on the screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what happens sometimes. So if it is like this, save. And let's see what happens. Did I connect the key? No, I didn't connect the key. We have to connect the X key. So. But before we do that, we have to create some destructible walls. And you know, in prior versions of Unreal, I think it's prior to 4.15 or something, then you could create destructible meshes just in the engine as it is. But now you have to go to plugins and you have to search for Apex and enable Apex destruction. So we're gonna do that, just make sure everything is saved so we don't lose anything. And when you're certain of that, we'll go to plugins and search for Apex and then enable Apex, Apex destruction and restart now. So, that's good. Now we will simply find a wall in the starter content architecture wall so we can duplicate that. Control W to duplicate. My wall. And we will drag this into the detector folder. Move it there and then double click it and we'll just give it a material something with stone perhaps rough that's good enough for me now make sure it has collision if it doesn't have collision you can't fracture it and destroy it so you have to have collision but these already have collision so that's not a problem then don't restore please 
right click and create destructible mesh. Now, you can do a lot here, but we're not gonna make this complicated. So the only thing we need to worry about is cell side count. How many pieces will it explode into? And I'm gonna take 30. And then create, uh, create it, fracture mesh. Explode amount, you can try it here. Yeah, okay. So that's good, save. Now, drag it out here. So let's say, you know, you can use this for multiple things. Maybe it's not mines, it's the player is collecting. Maybe it's actually pieces of a bomb that he needs to put together in order to blow through a wall and you know get further so that's why I'm creating all of this because then you can use it for different things so I'm just gonna make this wall really big and nice like so uh, and my camera is gonna go out soon because I don't have more space on the card but you will still hear me so I hope that's okay um, but anyway, go into our first person blueprints, first person character. So, now it's time to have some fun. Go into the viewport, add components and search for radial force. And we will call this big bomb, yeah, radial force, why not? And we will place it right in front of the gun, like so. And under impulse strength, I don't know, we can try and take 2,000, maybe not 20,000. <laughs> Force strength, yeah, take 200. Destructible damage. You have to enable this in order for it to, as it says, will cause damage to destructible meshes as well. So I'll set that to 100. Radius, yeah. It, you can try different ones, you know. Uh, if true, the impulse will ignore mass of objects and will always result in a fixed velocity change. You can use this if you want. I'm going to use it now. Ignore owning actor. So it does not, you know, blow the player away. It doesn't, but we're going to check it anyway. Just to make sure everything is as it should. I think that is all we need, but we're going to add uh, some particles for the fun of it, so we can call this big bomb particles. Now we will drag this up to the detector lights. Well, yeah, that should be good. Because then it will be at the tip of our gun. Now go back into the event graph. And we will set up the X key. Now this will be the longest function yet. I'm just gonna have to find it to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, it's not a function, it's just inside of the event graph. So we start by getting the X key that we created, input. I don't remember what I called it. It's probably something with a big bomb. Yeah, big bomb key. So, this we will only do once. So, when pressed, search for do once. Like so. Then, we will drag out this and we will find... Let's see where that was inside of our one of these 
we have the B big bomb ready so we're gonna get that so when you click the key big bomb get B big oh um, I'm ahead of myself completed then branch of course of course and then actually what we need to do is we need to go up to here where we find the uh, widget or create the widget and out from the return value we will search for HUD and get landmine encounter after is this really what I did? This is what's here. That's that's strange. Because I'm trying to find the land mine counter HUD before the boom. So I'm trying to find this. But it doesn't show up. Okay, let's just try it anyway. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It's because I didn't create, I think. I didn't actually create it. I see, I see. So we're gonna create a variable and we're gonna call it landmine counter underscore HUD. And up in the variable type, we're gonna search for HUD. And we're gonna take the landmine HUD. And then we're gonna set it. And we're gonna put it in here. I think this this will probably be correct. Probably. <laughs> now let's go back to where we were. So many things happening up here. So if we now go down here and the condition is HUD, we can drag in this and then we can search for big, big bomb, get big bomb ready. Now we're going to take this to condition. So if we click the big bomb key and the big bomb is ready we will first of all fire an impulse so we will get the big bomb radial force control and drag in and drag this out and search for fire impulse connect the fire impulse to this And one of uh, our rabbits are chewing uh, cardboard behind there. I'm sorry about that. That's just life. And then we're going to drag in the big bomb particles and get them. And we're going to take activate. And that reminds me in the viewport, select big bomb particles and deactivate them under activation, auto activate, deactivate compile and go back to the event graph like this now we will play a sound at location and this will be an explosion and I will need some more space this one is long so after we have played the explosion sound, we will set total landmines. So when we use a bomb, we will have to subtract three mines from our total amount of mines. 
right? So we will create a new variable which is called big bomb value and this will be an integer. Compile and the value of it will be 3. Now we can get it, no set it, and no I mean get it and then we can get total landmines as well. So we will take the total landmines that we have minus the big bomb value and set the new total landmines number that will be left after we have used the big bomb. Right? This makes sense, I hope. Then when this is done, we're going to add a tiny little delay so that we can enjoy the explosion and the particles. So we're going to enjoy those for half a second and then we will turn off well at least toggle the particles so drag out from the particles and search for visibility toggle it and I'm gonna make this a little better to look at like so and then we're gonna take the big bomb radial force and we will toggle activate. You would think you could just toggle visibility. No, you wouldn't. So that's why we have to toggle activate because we have to deactivate it. Like here. And after that is done, we are gonna take the end of this and go all the way back to do once and reset the do once. And let's manage these cables. Like this. Whew. And compile and save. Now, it's not that complicated, but this is a long row, so make sure everything is correct. We will go out now and try it. So I pick up, pick up. Let's try to activate. And it works, but we're not seeing an explosion. Why not? What did I forget? We didn't even see. Oh, oh, that's probably because. We didn't actually set any particles here. Could that be it? I don't know, let's try. Here we go. That was, that was close. I don't want that so close. <laughs> or maybe we should set something else. I don't know, maybe... Some smoke? I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter, right? This is just for fun. Let's see if we can blow up that wall. Yeah, it could be a little bit stronger though. So go back in and take the big bomb radial force, impulse strength. I'm gonna just jack that up to 5,000. And the force strength, let's take 1,000. I don't know. I don't know about this. We'll see. Let's try again. So as you also can see that when we use it, the button on the screen is removed again. So that's what we did here in the landmine HUD, you know, after the boom. So when we got less than three total landmines, we can't see it anymore. We can't use it anymore. Here we go, then you can get through. Ah. So, if we now take all of these mines and we control C, control V twice and we just drag them around here so the player can, so you can see how 
You could say the inventory works. I'm actually gonna remove, uh, well, at least move all of this a bit. Like so. So let's see. Oh, yeah, they're too, too low. Are they really? No. No, they're not. I, I'm just... So, let's pick up all of them. Got three, can use them. Make sure they don't kill you while you do this. Ooh. Boom. Yeah, now I can use all of them. So, we got eight. That means we can explode two times. So, boom. <laughs> That's awesome. Boom. And we got two left, so we need more mines in order for this to... Okay, the this particle effect just lasts and lasts. So I'm going to go back to the first person, and I'm going to use an explosion. I thought that was cooler, actually. Particles. Let's see. Now I want to pick up all of them. So, you know, this is it. You can create a lot of different things with this, you know, this knowledge. You can create a real mine detector or bomb detector. You can just create where you gather bomb parts to create a big bomb, you know. <laughs> so, I hope that was helpful, you know, and I hope you had fun. I did, so hope everything went well, and you know, have a great day.